Jim Carafano joins us now. He's the Vice President of Foreign and Defense Policy Studies at the Heritage Foundation. They're online at heritage.org. And, uh, Jim, good evening. Hey, good to be with you. Good to have you uh, back on tonight. And uh, I, I would just note, for one thing, uh, whoever wins will do so with considerably less than a mandate. We're talking about a razor-thin margin, and other countries, even countries which may not uh, use our system of governance, which may not, in fact, particularly like our system of governance, probably have a pretty good handle on what our system means, and therefore they will know that whoever is in office lacks that mandate for for much of anything. Will that be a factor in dealing with other countries, particularly adversaries? You know, probably not. Uh, first of all, in, in our constitutional system, whether you're elected by one vote or a gazillion votes, uh, you're the commander in chief. You have enormous authority in, in foreign policy. The Constitution assigns all kinds of authorities to the executive. And I actually, you know, if I'm an adversary, I'm looking at the United States. What I see is record numbers of Americans going to the polls and voting. That to me is enormous support for the system and confidence in the system. And I think it makes the American democracy look pretty strong and pretty resilient. So if I'm an adversary, I don't see big signs of weakness there. Well, that's encouraging. All right, very good. Now then, in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, the the breakdown of our our government, at the moment it would appear that uh, the public has again voted the straight paralysis a ticket uh, as regards uh, Congress. The House will stay Democratic, a little bit less so, but still Democratic. And uh, the Senate will stay uh, Republican, a little bit less so, but still uh, Republican. So uh, whoever becomes the president will deal with a divided Congress, and presumably that will make uh, some things more difficult. The passing of legislation certainly uh, if uh, Joe Biden becomes president, it may be difficult getting, uh, let's say, a, a treaty through uh, the, the Senate or, or, or certain key figures confirmed, possibly, given our recent history of, uh, of highly partisan uh, such deliberations in, in offering advice and consent. Uh, your thoughts at that, in that uh, regard? Well, I think that's, that's certainly true. And in a divided Senate, um, that's really important because when you look at trade deals and trade authority and treaties, the role of the Senate there is pretty crucial. At the other place from a foreign policy and national security standpoint where it's likely to have enormous impact uh, is on defense and, uh, you know, where we agree on a, on a defense budget. I mean, you know, the reality is, is we don't have one, two political parties. We kind of really have like more like three. I mean, if to get the Democratic Party on national security and foreign policy issues, it's a lot to cover from very radical, uh, you know, a wing to you know something that looks more moderate and, and, and almost uh, Republican. And you could see a lot of instances where Democrats to move uh, for the Demo- the moderate Democratic wing of the party to move anything in Congress on national security and foreign policy, they actually have to partner with. Republicans against other people in their own party to do a responsible defense budget or or or, uh, or something like that. One eight six six five zero Jimbo. One eight six six five zero five four six two six. Under the assumption for the moment that Joe Biden has won, I have heard the criticism made, and it has been phrased as a criticism that uh, you won't see much in the way of international leadership, that he is the kind of person who believes very much in multilateralism, that is to say, not uh, saying as president of the most powerful country in the world, this is what we must do, but uh, how does everybody here feel about that? That is to say, uh, if we deal, let's say, with some of uh, China's more truculent positions and uh, and policies, that uh, the tendency will be to... Uh, to try to find consensus, if you will, which in some cases may be another way of simply saying, well, I guess we won't do anything as the Chinese build uh, artificial islands and seize international waters as their own territory, as they continue to manipulate their currency, as they continue to uh, uh, show disrespect for intellectual property and and the like. Your thoughts about uh, Mr. Multilateral, which I've heard said of Joe Biden, you'll be much more uh, likely to to ask what everybody else wants to do before proceeding. 
Well, multilateralism, which is an organization made up of all nations, right? So that's not NATO or international organizations, right, where nations are, are member states or part of an organization like the UN. Look, that's a challenge regardless of who the president is. And it's a challenge because we live in what's called the era of great power competition. So you have, on one hand, the free world kind of lighting the world the way it is, the way it was from the Cold War in the 1990s, you know, take. And then you have the, the great destabilizers, the threats to global stability in the world. People look at China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran. China is a particular problem because China uses its influence in national and multinational organizations not to reach global consensus or establish global norms, but to advance Chinese interests. So this notion of, well, we'll rely on these organizations to make conflict. Well, in a theoretical world, that sounds great. But in the real world, what you actually have is you're often fighting in these organizations or against them to establish credible norms. And the World Health Organization is like the classic example. Chinese influence in the World Health Organization delayed the global response to the pandemic. It actually helped the pandemic spread. And China was in there for one reason, to cover up China's responsibility and, and China's misdeeds. Um, so the notion of, well, it, it, it's like putting a bank robber on the board of the bank and then thinking it's going to help deal with bank robbery. <laughs> that, that's very well put. The uh, fox in charge of the, the hen house, as it were. Uh, 1-866-50-JIMBO, our number, one 866 It seems to me that this multilateral view of the world is a lot more the view of what some people would like the world to be as opposed to what it is. And I might, in fact, well, agree with them. It's what I would like the world to be, but I don't think that it is. Well, look, here's, here's the fundamental problem. I mean, let's just look at China because it's probably the most outstanding example. Fundamentally, the United States and, and the nations of the world, our differences, we like, we don't like, we like tweeting, we like orange hair, whatever. We fundamentally believe we believe in freely and we believe in the free enterprise. Generally speaking, we believe in any of those things. And, and in fact, like China sees those things as to the expansion of its power and influence. So the reality is, is if free world countries don't work together, they will not be able to defend and protect those equities. Now, and that's the metric is, do you work together? Not are you, do you have a participation trophy? So the United States, the last four years, lots of multilateral work in the Asia Pacific, for example, where we were with Japan and India and Australia. It's called the Quad. It's not a formal organization. But it is multilateralism, and it's actually way more effective for dealing with China than the formal organizations the agency, like ASEAN. Well, if we actually uh, get, in fact, uh, international organizations to work together, or, or inter I should say countries to work together, where, whether it be through a, a formal uh, framework or something else, that would be fine. I'm just not convinced that, uh, that uh, people like uh, Xi of China or uh, Putin – or uh, uh, Kim Jong Un, or, or others uh, may not uh, be pretty adept at uh, at working one side against the other. Uh, Russia, for example, and the inordinate influence they have over uh, Western Europe as we enter winter with the uh, supplies of natural gas, for example. Right. That's why we have part. And we need partnership. The reality is, is this is the president we have now, federal president. You could. As for, he's actually much better at multilateralism than Obama. Much, much better.